This is the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. And today we're gonna to test it in five categories and see if it lives up to EcoFlow's claim of best portable power station under one kilowatt hour. Powering up the device is easy. I'm just gonna hold this power button and see how much battery I have. 28%. So to do my battery capacity test, first I'm gonna charge this to 100%. The only item inside the box besides the manual is this charging cable. And this charging cable looks like it might be kinda long. Wow. <laughs> There are two inputs on the back of the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. First is your AC input, which this is the same cable that you would get with a computer monitor or a desktop computer. Over on the other side, we have an XT60 input, and this would be for solar power or possibly charging from your car. This outlet accepts between 11 and 50 volts and up to 13 amps max. And as it's charging right now, the fan on the side has already kicked in and it's not really too loud. I'll monitor the sound as the device charges and see if it gets any louder. From the wall outlet, I'm getting about 900 watts into the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. And this thing claims to have a 70 minute recharge time from 0%. And I will test that a little later in the video. I have tested the River 2 Pro in a previous video and I had really good results. So today I wanted to use my five category system that I had been testing all power stations with in 2023. The first First category is battery capacity followed by recharge time. Then I want to test the maximum inverter capability. So how much power can I pull at one time from the device's AC inverter? Next, I want to look at the overall amount of features and then finally discuss the overall value. Is the power station really worth it? While I wait for this thing to recharge completely, let's check out the EcoFlow app. The EcoFlow app is a Bluetooth enabled app. As I've accessed the app, you can see I have another device that is currently not turned on. And then it wants me to add the River 2 Pro. It says select Wi-Fi. All right, looks like we're connecting and it looks like we have had success. The first thing I like to do when these devices are activated is I go into settings and I check for firmware updates. This device has the current firmware update, so I'm good to go. So let's go back and look at what we have going on. I currently have about 34 minutes remaining until the device is completely recharged. It's bringing in 895 watts from the AC inverter, and you can see there's no power coming in from solar, or the USB-C. When I access the menu, I can share the device. I can also limit the maximum amount of power going into the device. The only reason that I would do that would be if I'm not using this for emergency situations and I wanna potentially prolong the battery's life. In five years of testing these devices, I've only had one or two go bad due to the battery's age or damage to the battery from recharging. And those devices had the older chemistry. This power station does have the lithium iron phosphate chemistry, so it's rated to last up to 10 years with that battery. So I'll keep it at that 940 watt max input because when I do want to plug it in and charge it, I want to get the maximum charge possible whenever I need to plug it into the wall. Going into the car input, if you have problems with blowing fuses or you have an older, weaker car input system, you can limit the input. Keep in mind by limiting that input, you are also increasing the time that it takes to recharge. So eight amps at 12 volts, so you're limiting that to either 96 or a minimum of 48 watts at that four amp rating. DC mode allows you to select between either solar input or car charging input. They both use that XT60 jack that I showed you earlier, but the capability to input is very different between the car and the solar panel. I'll leave it on auto because I do like to use a combination of solar power versus car charging. The next option on the menu is this X boost mode. I'm gonna leave that on. X-Boost mode is perfect for things like hot plates and coffee makers that pull a steady, high resistive load. It'll fluctuate the voltage so that it allows those higher loads to run. So your device will still work and you'll be able to boil that water, but it won't necessarily work as well as it would work from your wall outlet. Unit timeout. I like to set those to never because if I have the device turned on, I want it to stay on until I turn it off. For example, if you're going to use this in a greenhouse or someplace where you don't have direct access at all times and you want that thing on, you just leave it on and it stays on. I'm also, for my purposes for today, going to turn the screen timeout to never because I don't want the screen to turn off while we're talking about the device. 
For the battery capacity test, I'm gonna use this heat gun, which should pull around 0.2 C of the EcoFlow's 768 watt hour battery. There is a discrepancy between what I see on the display here and what I'm pulling on this meter. 153 watts is 0.2 C, and because I use this meter for all of my tests, I'm gonna account for the results from this meter for the results of my test. To start the test, I am going to reset this meter and disconnect the input power at the same time. Let's start the test. The Pro weighs in at 17.2 pounds and measures 10.6 inches wide, 10.2 inches deep from the front to the back of the handle and 8.9 inches tall. The AC inverter has four outlets and is designed to power loads up to 800 watts continuously and supports surges up to 1600 watts. But with X boost mode, you can power continuous loads up to 1600 watts. EcoFlow claims that you can run up to 80% of high wattage home appliances in X boost mode. The USB panel has three USB A ports, putting out 12 watts each and one USB C port, delivering up to 100 watts of power. The DC panel has one 12.6 volt or 126 watt outlet, and there are two 5521 ports rated at 36 watts. The real question is, does anyone use these ports anymore? We got 647 watt hours from the 768 watt hour battery for an inverter efficiency of about 85%. I like to see these devices return between 80 and 90% from the inverter, so this one checks the box. Now let's plug it in and see how long it takes to recharge from 0%. EcoFlow claims that this will charge in 70 minutes. I'm at a 0% state of charge. I'll start my timer and see what we get. Now we're gonna see how strong this AC inverter is. For this test, I've brought out my water kettle, my little mini egg cooker, and I've also brought out this Instant Pot. I think the Instant Pot does run around the AC inverter's maximum sustainable power of about 800 watts. So what I'm gonna do is try to run both the kettle and the Instant Pot at the same time and see what happens. It is illuminated and you can just barely see it. I'm gonna come over here and just hit Oil. So the kettle is immediately going up to the 800 watts from the power station. Turning on the instant pot, we'll see if we can run them both at the same time. Right now I'm pulling power from both the kettle and the instant pot. Inverter lasted about 30 seconds with the kettle and the instant pot. Now I'm just gonna run the kettle in this egg cooker and see if it will boil the water and cook an egg at the same time. The kettle is currently hitting about 150 degrees, so I believe that this system will boil this water and cook the eggs at the same time. I normally use the heat gun for this test. I feel like this is a more realistic use of this device for something that you would do if you're camping. Boiling water to have some breakfast. This kettle usually pulls around 800 watts and the dash egg cooker usually pulls around 300 watts. With this load, I've already used about 10% of the battery's capacity and it says that I can run this for about 39 more minutes in this current configuration. The kettle just boiled the water, so I do have boiling water there. Now that the kettle is done boiling, the egg cooker is pulling 340 watts from the power station. Earlier when I did the battery capacity test, I pulled a little bit higher power on this meter than I normally do for that test. Also, this egg cooker normally pulls around 300 watts, but it's displaying 340 watts here as well. So there seems to be about a 10% difference between what's being displayed on the device than what I believe that the egg cooker normally pulls. All right. 17% of the battery to boil some water and boil some eggs. Now let's see how the power station can handle the heat gun. Now I've got the heat gun rated at 1800 watts, which is just 200 watts over the EcoFlow's rated AC maximum output. So we're gonna test this and see if it can run it. There we go. Now earlier when I used this, I had it set to pull about 153 watts, but now I'm gonna turn it up to max and see what it does. So what X-Boost mode is doing for this heat gun is as I turn up the heat, you'll hear the fan slow down. That's the voltage inside of the device dropping, fooling the heat gun into thinking that it's getting the power that it needs. Check it out. On the display, I'm never getting more than about 850 watts from the EcoFlow, but this heat gun thinks it's getting its 1800 watts and it's not putting out as much heat as it should be. 
The power station can handle it, but this is really only useful for doing things like boiling water or maybe cooking pancakes on an electric griddle. EcoFlow claims that the River 2 Pro will charge from zero to 100% in under 70 minutes. And it checked that box by completing its charge in 69 and a half minutes. So I completely drained this one more time using that heat gun. And now I'm gonna see how much power I can put into it with this 220 watt solar panel. Hooking up the solar panel is super easy. Just unzip it, pull it out of the bag. In this case, this is a massive solar panel in a massive bag. For this solar panel, because the sun is at such a great angle, I'm just gonna fold it out and generally face it towards the sun. I've got plenty of space to lay out this solar panel and give it a few minutes to turn back on because I did deplete it 100%. I'm pretty surprised because I didn't exactly angle this panel perfectly to the sun. I can angle it a little steeper and I'm already getting 171 watts from the panel. Let me see if I can angle it and get about 200 from this 220 watt solar panel 195 watts i've got this thing facing the sun pretty much as good as i can get it right now keep in mind this is the beginning of april so the sun is still at an angle relative to my position the egoflow's display claims that it'll take about four hours to recharge the device from zero percent to 100 percent getting 195 watts that's a pretty good result from that 220 watt solar panel how did the ecoflow river 2 pro stack up it returned 85% of its claim capacity using a 0.2C battery rundown test, which is about standard for a lithium iron phosphate system. It also managed to recharge from 0% to 100% in 70 minutes. This device has some decent features for its size and with a list price of $649, it comes in at less than a dollar per kilowatt hour, which is typically the standard that I see in pricing of devices like this. Check the link in the description to see the current price. This thing has an 800 watt AC inverter with four outlets and it can handle loads up to 1600 watts, but it does change the voltage with X-Boost mode to maintain an actual 800 watt output. 